Hello, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. It's Phil Thatch, and today I want to talk about the 200 to 800 lens, and specifically whether or not I recommend using this lens on my favorite wildlife camera, the Canon R7. Because man, if it was a recommendable combination, what a powerful combination it would be. Because this 800 millimeter lens on the 1.6 crop Canon R7 would give you a full frame equivalent field of view of 1,280 millimeters, which would be awesome. But is it recommendable? Let's talk about that. I use this lens all the time on my Canon R7 and it works great. This is the L series or premium series lens, the 100 to 500. It's a 4.5 to 7.1 and it is sharp as a tack. And more importantly for this discussion, it has a very high resolving power. So it produces an image in its circle of projection that has lots and lots of detail. And what happens with the R7, it is a super high resolution APS-C camera. It's 32.5 megapixels, which sounds like by today's standards, well, that's not that much. The R5 has 45 megapixels, but in terms of pixel density, it is incredibly high resolution. There's a equation that I've learned from Tony Northrup. It was on one of his videos, and that is crop sensor megapixels times crop factor squared equals full frame of megapixels. And the R7 is 32 and a half megapixels. So if you plug in the equation 32.5 times 1.6, which is that's the crop factor, 32.5 times 1.6 squared equals 83.2 megapixels. So the R7 has the pixel density of a full frame camera that is 83.2 megapixels. And that's why the R7 is so demanding. But this lens, the 100 to 500, has great resolving power, and it can, even on those tiny, tiny pixels, and that super high pixel density, it can put a sharp image on that tiny, tiny, super high pixel density sensor. So that's something to think about. Now. I'm a photographer who doesn't take pictures of test charts. I know I probably should, but I just don't. I like to go out with a lens, put it on my camera, and make some pictures and show you what I can do with it. Uh, I call it a real world review. I probably got that name from Jared Poland, but it's not test charts. It's just me taking the lens out with a camera and seeing what I can actually do with it. and. When I first got this lens, I started using it on my R6 Mark II, which is a 24 megapixel full frame camera. I'm actually using it to record this video right now. And this works pretty good on that. But the R6 Mark II has an extremely low pixel density sensor. It's 24 megapixels in full frame mode. If you step this down to crop sensor mode, it is 9.4 megapixels in crop mode. 9.4 times 1.6 squared equals 24.064. It's 9.4 or 9.3 something. It's somewhere in the low nines of megapixels in crop mode. And that's just not very high resolution. So it, this lens, which if you point it at a test chart, might not be the sharpest lens in the world. The R6 Mark II sensor, because it's so low pixel density, it doesn't really display the weaknesses of this lens. Some of my photography contemporaries on YouTube have used this lens with an R5 and have had some luck with it. And you would think, well, if this lens doesn't work well on a high pixel density camera, why are people having some success with it on the R5? Well, the R5, when you compare it to the R7 with its 32.5 megapixel APS-C sensor, when you take the pixel density of the R5 and you shrink that pixel density down to an APS-C sensor, it's about 17.75 megapixels. 17.75, way less, barely more than half the pixel density of the R7. 17.75 times 1.6 squared equals 45.44. The R5, while a fine camera, it has nowhere near the pixel density of the R7. And this lens, while I have never pointed it at a test chart, 
Christopher Frost, who he doesn't do real world reviews. He points cameras at test charts and lenses at test charts. His video just came out and it shows that this lens at 200 millimeters is not very sharp. At 500, it's fairly sharp. And at 800 millimeters, it's not very sharp. And because the R6 Mark II and the R3, for example, that guy, Johnny Pink, he's made some photographs using an R3, which is only 24 megapixels, and has had some pretty nice results with this lens. Well, those low megapixel and more specifically low pixel density sensors don't reveal the flaws of this lens or the shortcomings is a better word of this lens. So if you have an R3 or if you have an R6 or an R8 or an R6 Mark II, all those low pixel density cameras, those don't work great with this lens for small birds because it just doesn't have enough reach. But with this lens, you do have enough reach. You have 800 millimeters. And because it's super low pixel density, it doesn't reveal the shortcomings of this lens. So I do recommend this lens for people with an R6 or an R6 Mark II or an R3. And apparently, though I haven't tried it myself, it works well with the R5. But to me, this lens on the R7 is not recommendable. It's just going to be soft. I had a comment the other day that, that said that the 300 extra millimeters is more important than the slightly softer images. And while that does sound like it would be true, when Heather and I were at the Black Point Wildlife Drive and we were both sitting in the car pointing R7s out the window, and I had this lens on an R7 and I was using all 800 millimeters and I still had to crop a little bit. And Heather was using the ultra sharp 100 to 500 on an R7. So she had to crop her images a lot more. When we looked at our images, even though hers were much more cropped, they seemed at least as sharp and maybe a little sharper. So I, I don't think the 300 extra millimeters is worth it on a super high resolution camera, but on a low resolution camera, like the R6 or the R6 Mark II or the R3, the 300 millimeters is more valuable. But on a camera like the R7 that has a ton of pixel density, this lens and some cropping is probably more powerful and sharper than this lens and not cropping as much. And you may say, maybe it's not good on the R7 because the R7 autofocus system is not as good as the autofocus system on the R6 and the R6 Mark II and the R3 and the R5. I don't think that's the problem. I don't think that's the problem because the R7 autofocus system, while it does block great focus sometimes and then maybe move around a little and make you miss a few shots in a burst, when I do get one good and in focus with this lens, it is sharp, sharp, sharp. And with this lens, it is kind of sharp. So I don't think it's the autofocus system of the R7 that's the problem. I think it's this lens can't handle that camera's high pixel density sensor. You know, you would think that a less expensive camera should work well with a less expensive lens. But actually, that less expensive camera with its crazy high pixel density reveals the flaws of this lens. And in order to really take advantage of the super high pixel density of the R7, you need this lens with its super sharp and super high resolving power. It just works better. So that's my thoughts on that. Um, hopefully it didn't make you mad. I know it's not gonna be popular to, to not recommend this lens, but I just can't recommend it with the R7. I still like it with the R6 Mark II. And a matter of fact, I like it better than this lens with the R6 Mark II because this lens just doesn't have enough reach where this lens does and you can't crop much on the R6 Mark II. I just don't recommend it on the R7. I like this lens. I'm going to keep this lens, but I'm not going to use it on my R7. I'm just not. I don't think it's a good idea. Next thing I need to do is test this lens versus the 800 F11 at 800 millimeters and see which one is sharper because the, the 800 F11 is definitely not as sharp as this, but it doesn't, I don't think it's as soft as this. Now that's this wide open. Maybe I should compare them both wide open and then both of them at F11 where the F11 lens will still be at F11 
and this lens would be stopped down two thirds of a stop. That might be my next video in this series of which lens is better than which lens for which camera. But like I say, the subject of today's video and what I was trying to say is I don't recommend this for the R7, but I still do for the R6 and the R6 Mark II and the R3. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. Have a great day. If you like this content, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see some more, subscribe, hit the bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.